What's up guys, Kenji here from Playing Numbers, talking to you today about how to become a data scientist with little to no technical background. I studied economics and business in school, and I have transitioned to become a pure data scientist. I get a lot of questions from students, from people who have just graduated college about how I made this move, and I'd love to talk you through my experiences and the things that I've learned on this journey. Now, there are three main topics that I'd like to cover. The first is what skills do you need as a data scientist? The second is how do you go about learning these skills? And finally, after you have this data science toolkit, how do you make yourself desirable on the job market? What can you do to give yourself the best opportunity going forward? Now, jumping right in, when I think of a data scientist, I think of a problem solver. You have a lot of different sources of information. You have a lot of questions that you want to ask, and your job is to produce insight. And in order to produce insight, you need a lot of flexibility and flexibility in the tools that you use. I think the most flexible tools that are out there are coding languages. It's integral to your data science work to understand or have some understanding of one or more coding languages. I would recommend Python, R, or potentially Scala to learn to be able to maximize your skills and your flexibility as a data scientist. I think that with focus study, someone that had never written a code, a line of code before, could get to a comfortable place where they could do some data science work in about two to three months. The second thing that you need as a data scientist is some data aptitude, understanding of how data is organized and how it works, and understanding of how databases work, working with SQL or some unstructured database, and understanding how to cut and manipulate data so it can be used in your algorithms that you're going to create is as valuable a skill as any. I probably spend 50 to 60% of my time as a data scientist cutting, manipulating, and organizing data. Then I can do the fun stuff and actually analyze it. One thing that might resonate with some of the less technical people is the visualization aspect of data. In order to give insight or to transmit insight to the business side of an organization, visuals are usually used to tell a story. It converts basically the code and the, and the analytic level insight to something that is understandable on the business side. And people with a marketing background or the business background might have really good experience doing this, and good news, a lot of companies actually hire data scientists that specialize in visualization. So targeting these roles, looking for visualization roles to get, in, to get your foot in could help you establish yourself and you can work on your other technical skills on the job. The last thing that I think is really important for a data scientist is experience. I'm not talking about experience in terms of the number of years that you've worked as a data scientist or the number of hours you put in. I talk about experience in terms of what type of work that you've done. If you've done in a fantasy football analysis where you're re re regression, I consider that experience. That's something you could put on your GitHub. That's something you could put on Kaggle, on a lot of these websites where you can share the work that you have produced. And that's great for you because you can use it as a reference. If you have to write another regression, you can pull that code and see how it works. Or it can also show the world the type of work that you are capable of doing. And it shows that you're willing to do that type of work in your free time, which is absolutely awesome. That means you love data science and I would want you at my company. Now, how do you go about learning those skills that I just talked about? I think there's three main ways. The first I'll talk about is the approach that I took. I went through the formal education process where I got my master's in computer science, where I focused in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now this is good for me because in order for me to learn, I need a structured environment where someone has to twist my arm a little bit to actually get me to, to do the work. There's deadlines, it's very structured, and you know what you're gonna get going in. I think for a lot of people, this might be a good approach, but it's important to consider the downsides of the formal education process. One, really expensive. I spent probably 60 to 80 grand over the course of two and a half years to get this degree. Two, it lacks a ton of flexibility. If I want to take a course, say I want to learn about neural nets, and the neural net course is only offered in a different season, a different quarter, a different semester, I have to wait until that, that time period to actually take that course. I think that 
you can learn a lot of material faster in through some different avenues. One of the benefits is that a lot of jobs look for data scientists with advanced degrees and having an advanced degree can help you get your foot in the door. I don't necessarily like that that is the case. I don't think an advanced degree is necessarily a great indicator of how good a data scientist you are, but that is kind of the way the world works. And if you're looking at working in a more corporate environment, in a larger company, that might be something that they are looking for is this graduate degree. These schools also offer certificate programs and and other ways to, to learn these skills. I think that they're completely valid, but you don't get the degree that comes with uh, a master's program or something like that. There are generally master's programs in computer science, in data analysis or data analytics, and data science. I would do your own research to see if any of these would be a great fit for you in particular. The, the next approach, which I think is the most, the, the best approach, if you have the discipline to do it, is to teach yourself a lot of these things. The internet has limitless resources on data science, on computer science, on any of these learning tools. And if you have the discipline and are willing to make a study schedule, it is possible to learn everything that you would want to know about data science online. You can go to Kaggle, which is probably my favorite data science resource, KD Nuggets, you can go to Code Academy, you can go to Udemy, Udacity, Datacamp. All of these websites have learning information that is either free or close to free. And, you know, it's nickels and dimes compared to the cost of a formal education. Again, you really need to have the focus and the willingness to stick to, stick to, the, to, stick to that path. But it is inherently super flexible and you can learn at your own pace. You know, if you're, if you're really smart, if you're really into this, you could learn as much data science as you would need to get a, a really good job in six months to a year. But if you want to take your time, you could, you could learn this over the course of three or four years, and it would be no problem. Now, the last way that I think is an interesting approach to getting data science training and the skills that you need is through the company you already work with or through the job that you're hiring for. So let's say I'm a marketing analyst. I mean, I studied marketing in school and I get a job as a marketing analyst. A lot of companies offer training in SQL. They offer training in potentially programming and visualization software that I could do on work time for free. It probably won't be as comprehensive, the full body of study of data science that a lot of these other programs or approaches would have, but you can get these schools on your work and that's a huge benefit. Uh, you're getting on work training and, and they're paying you for it. Now, that's hit or miss, depending on, on the, the job you have and the company you work for, but I would definitely look out to see what opportunities are available to you at your job. Now, after you've gotten those skills, how do you maximize them? How do you get a job? How do you get your foot in the door? To me, the most important thing is networking. You have to reach out to alumni from, from your school. For you, have, you can go to meetups. There's plenty of places to meet people and get involved in these communities. And just talking to people, expand your knowledge, and it it really is the best way to, to find an end somewhere. Now, as a non-technical student, if you're coming from business, uh, if you're coming from marketing, etc., this might be very natural to you to go out, meet people, and that could be a huge boon for you because nothing about engineers or anything like that, but I've found that some business people are a bit, have a bit more polished interpersonal skills that could really take them far in this, in this field of study and in this profession. So that is something to consider. I would also look at the resume. The resume is very important for describing who you are and what you want. If I am applying for a data visualization role, it's extremely important for my resume to be very visual. I'd want it to be colorful. I'd want it to have graphs because you're selling yourself, you're selling that you are a visualization person. Now, the same thing goes for your LinkedIn profile, for any web profile or resume that you might have, make it match the position that you want to have. The final thing that I've touched on before is this idea of a portfolio, uh, a, a, a Git repository or a profile on Kaggle. You, you have to be continually doing work and showcasing it. You could even make a YouTube video talk, walking through a really cool analysis that you did. These things are all super interesting to employers. They'd be interested to me as an employer. 
and I'd love to see that in new candidates. So thank you guys so much. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the section below. Also subscribe if you think that this is, uh, if these videos are interesting, you'd like to see me make more. I'm going to try and post more regularly. Thanks again. Have a great one.